I love the breeding season. I'm Dave Kaufman, and welcome to the premiere episode of Herpers TV. You know, there are so many different philosophies and so many different methods all to achieve the same outcome, and that's to get ball pythons to breed, ovulate, and lay eggs. So wouldn't it be great to be a fly on the wall as three of the top breeders from the United States visits one of the top breeders in Canada? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do in this premiere episode of Herpers TV as we visit Mark Mandic's place outside of Toronto, Ontario. There's three breeders I'm sure you guys will recognize stop by and they share so much information that this episode is actually going to be a two-parter. So, welcome to the premiere episode of Herpers TV. I'm a herper and I love it. You know, a lot of people ask me how I got started uh, breeding ball pythons. Um, my daughter actually came to me one day and she said, you know, Dad, I want a pet. And I said, well, what kind of pet do you want? She said, I want a pet reptile. And, you know, you want to make your children happy. So I went into this uh, pet store that specialized in reptiles and I said, what would you recommend? Well, the first thing I recommended was a ball python. And uh, they had one there. It was a mature ball python. They put it in my hands, and I remember looking down at this snake and thinking, oh my God, this is incredible. And right away, I knew, yeah, I had to have one of these things in, in, instead of uh, actually getting it for my daughter. So I looked everywhere. I went on the internet and, and did searches for ball pythons, and all I could find was American breeders, but nobody wanted to ship me a snake because all we wanted was a normal. And uh, luckily, after a few searches, I found a breeder just 20 minutes up the road, and they had some ball pythons for sale. We were there like in 20 minutes, loved the snakes, bought two of them, came home, gave one to my son, one to my daughter, and then I realized I didn't have one. So we went back the next day and bought one for me and one for my wife, and that's where the whole Marcus Jane was born. And by the way, Marcus Jane, it's not my name, it's Mark Mandic. My wife's name is Jane, and you know, without her, I couldn't have done this. So we combined the names, and it became Marcus Jane Ball Pythons. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to my uh, humble abode. Long time. Yeah. Doing? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm thinking it's a smart place, and then I uh -huh. smell rats. I'm like, it's yeah, Mark. It's my place. Welcome to Canada. Welcome cool, to. Cool, man. Uh, hey. Hey. I hey. don't do the A thing or the you know or a boot. A boot? A boat? A boat. A boat. Do you go out of the house? A boat, yeah. No. <laughs> so listen, it's great having you here, and uh, let me show you around. Where That's do you right, want to start? Well, it looks got, like man? we're in the rodent room. We are in the rat room. room. All cool right. stuff, man. So, this is uh, kind of where I, I raise all my own food and so on. This is where I raise This is the food, food that you eat? This is the food I actually eat. <laughs> I eat my rats before good? I feed them to the snakes. Yeah, we've no. had it. It's great stew. I absolutely love my rats. You can open up any bin and pull a rat out and hold it. It'll never try to bite you. It'll never, except it might bite Kevin. No, uh, I, don't, I talk rat. Yeah. I love rats. Even your softwares? Yeah. I mean, they're cool. Even my softwares are pretty nice. I don't have a lot of them, but they're pretty nice. You can. I mean, they're just really cool rats. My rats are cool. Yeah, I'm sure they are. You're a rat whisperer. Yeah, but, uh, true. So basically, I have a heat exchanger in this room, and it sucks uh, the stale air out, and which is warm air. But as it's going out, it's actually heating the air that's coming in. So I got fresh air coming in from outside. It's being heated in the winter time. It also has a summer setting that it's bringing in cool air. And then what I have is from my snake room, which is right next door. It vents the hot air from the snake room into the rat room in the winter so it heats this room and I have no supplemental heat whatsoever in this room in the winter time but in the summertime I cap it and drive the hot air up into the attic so I'm not blowing hot air in here. You're green. Your snake room heats your rat room. Yeah. That's pretty green. Yeah. Oh for sure. For sure. No this way I have control of exactly what goes into my snakes. From start to finish, I get the best food, the best rats, everything is controlled, and, and we go from there. That's where the magic begins. You want to see the snake room? Let's oh, check yeah. It out. All right. I love rats and all, but. Yeah, all right. Right through here. 
Before I went into this full time, I was actually in the TV business. I was a commercial producer. I ran uh, the commercial department at a local TV station. So I wrote commercials, edited commercials, and directed commercials. And in doing so, you had to be incredibly creative and being creative all the time and trying to come up with new ideas you get burnt out I would do on average maybe 300 commercials a year uh, it, it does burn you out when I got into the snakes it was like here's my new creative outlet I can take this morph and this morph and cross them together and nobody was my boss I was doing this on my own and that was just so refreshing. So I quit my job in 2004. What was fascinating was the fact that I was so afraid to quit, but the reality is I made more in one week after I left my job than I had made in an entire year working for the TV station. All right, come on in. This is, uh, let me turn that off. This is where I uh, do my magic. This is, I mean, it's not as big as Nerd or BHB or VPI, but it's, uh, it's my happy place. Uh, it's my kind of mad scientist room where I like to mix all the colors and make some really cool stuff, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's my happy place. This looks just like Marcus Jane Reptiles. It, uh, it is Marcus Jane Reptiles, <laughs> absolutely. This is the one I wanted to show you. This is, a lot of people don't know what this is. Uh, I know, gasp. Yeah, that is a butterfly. Butter, fire, pastel. But here's the, here's the deal here, okay? This is a baby butterfly. Massive. This is, uh, I don't know, gorgeous. This is gorgeous. This, this is my um, banana spider. This is the mother of the um, inchy banana spider that I produced this year. She gave me seven eggs. They're two nice inchy banana spider, or whatever banana inchy or west spider. Yeah, I think it's a nice. Yeah, but she she turned out really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of white. This is my accidental creation. You know how. Every year, somebody seems to have these uh, surprise clutches. Mine was or the clown ghost. Yours was the clown ghost, yep. okay. Well, this was my surprise. I didn't have a Xanthic in my collection, and um, I came home one day, and there was a silver head sticking out of a clutch of eggs. And, and, and it was a, ended up, I had two uh, piebald Xanthics in there and I had an Xanthic. Well, the craziest thing about this whole thing is there are people that were trying to produce yeah, this oh, for absolutely. years, yeah, and you yeah. were the first one to produce it by on accident. Fluke. Yeah. They called him Mark Manson after that. <laughs> they did. So, what else have we got? It's uh, an SSF. This is what I call the perfect Beautiful snake. Beautiful snake. I mean, this, this is going to be the best uh, pet store snake that's going to pop out at you right there. Simple. Super pastel. No, super vanilla pastel. I know I'm supposed to be like a big ball python breeder, but I had a real vice and it was called horses. And as my wife said, when you own a horse, Next time, just go dig a big hole in the backyard and every day go to throw money in it because that's exactly what only horses do. Boats, swimming pools, and horses. And horses. For me, it's cars. Right. You know, for Greg, it's been yeah. you know, running around filming. Kevin, you've got the band. Gay that... pornography. Yeah. <laughs> Which I was going to say the well band, but. Uh... Yeah, so I bought, I, I started yep. buying boas. And um, I think they're real cool. Uh, it also added a challenge because I pretty had pretty much had the ball python down pat, breeding wise. Boas are not that easy. They'll breed like crazy. It's getting viable litters. And the one I liked the most was uh, the T positive, BPI T positive. Hold on, sweetie. And I produced my first year, this is a, uh, a jungle T positive. Beautiful girl. One of the things about boas that wasn't happening in the ball python industry was 
these are snakes that get better with age. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting to see that with ball pythons for the yeah. first time. In the last few years, we're seeing that evolution uh, of better looking snakes as they age. I think in the future, the breeding of ball pythons and herpiculture on a whole in Canada is just going to escalate. There's so many people that are so excited about what's going on here. They're investing in high-end morphs and we are catching up with the rest of the world. In some cases, we're leading the rest of the world with some mutations, so that's pretty exciting. We just want to gain a reputation that when you're going to buy a ball python and you come to Canada to look for one, you're going to get a very good animal and uh, we're proud of that. We have to work harder up here because we're always looked at as being kind of the underdog. Everybody looks at America as being the leader and you know what? They are. But we try harder and we want to gain some ground and we believe we're doing that as well. What's your opinion? What is going to be the next worldwide ball python morph sensation? Comment below and share your opinion. Wow, what an incredible facility. Tune in next time as we continue our visit with Mark Mandic, the Python Hunters, and Kevin, as Mark takes us into his baby room and shows us some of the incredible ball python morphs that he was the first to produce in Canada. You've been watching Herpers TV, and we'll see you again the first and third Monday of every month. If you like the episode you just saw, you'll love the original Herpers DVD series. Each of the three 90-minute award-winning movies features every aspect of being a Herper. For more information and to pick up the Herpers trilogy on DVD, visit OfficeEntertainment.com.